I'm very pleased to be joined by the cast and director of The Death and Life of John F. Donovan. Welcome to the Toronto Film Festival. Welcome to our, our lovely little MTV enclave here. Mm. Good to see you guys. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful is the secret word. Um, congratulations on the film, Xavier. I mean, this is something that uh, is a long time coming. People have been waiting for this. I know there was talk of Cannes at one point. This, this one, you've been you know, slaving away in the edit room, getting it just right. Give me a sense of sort of the process on this one. Was this more challenging, as challenging as your other works? What was inherent about this one? No, I think it was definitely the, the most challenging experience for me. Um, well, I've started with very small local films, independent films, then graduated to a little bigger independent films. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm assuming this is by nature still an independent film because it's not you know, because of its theme, and yeah, because it's not studio, but, uh, um, and, and working with local artists and actors and, and, and the crew that I've, that I've um, assembled over the year and the, the artists that I love to work with in terms of image and, and, and um, art direction. Anyway, of course, this was bigger in scale, um, but um, also in, in longer in time. We wrote it with uh, my friend Jacob Tierney in during the holidays of 2012, 2013. Um, and ever since it's been, you know, getting it together and, 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 and making the film, producing the film, and then the editing process has been, has spanned over two years. Wow. And I, I'm familiar with editing films in two months and, and, oh. <laughs> and yeah, and, and and but but then I realize it's been you know it's been tough and it's been um, at times I felt uh, very uh, lonely and um, well lost I guess because I didn't know that process but at the very end of it once we saw the film and we were like this is it this is what we wanted to do and. Um, it was worth taking this time. Right. In, in the end, it doesn't really even matter the years of the process. It's what the finished product is for the audience out there. Clearly, right? and you're right. But getting there can be can feel um, lonely and, and and grueling by moment. Right. And you're taking the brunt of it. The audience will never know. Hopefully They'll never know. <laughs> yeah. So what matters is what you see, and yeah. what you see is is what we wanted to make. Yeah. Uh, Tandy Kit, talk to me a little bit about sort of how you responded to this material. What resonated with you? What's the first sort of oh, emotion? God. I was feel? excited. It was it was rebellious and brave and um, anarchic feeling. I mean, it shouldn't be, uh, but it did. It felt like that. And uh, I I had a conversation with Xavier. I was utterly intrigued and thrilled by his enthusiasm and. Um, his willingness to just be true to himself. Um, and even when we were Skyping, you know, I, I, we'd have, I, the first time we met, so I wasn't actually, you know, doing the movie yet, but we were just talking about whether it would be a good idea for us to work together. And I was sort of giving my, some ideas about the role and how to make it, not improve it, just enrich it with what I, what I could contribute. Mm. Um, and Xavier just immediately started writing down quotes from what I was saying and incorporated it into the material. And it was electrifying, really, because that's the creative process, is to be alive moment to moment to what's coming coming at you. Um, and it's it never ended. Right. And that's the moment that, that we started working together. And you know, I only worked on the movie for three days. I think we all, it was a kind of patchwork of, mm -hmm. um, of, of shooting. And I didn't get to meet Kit and Susan and a whole host of the actors because it's just myself and Ben who narrate the story. Right. Um, so it's been, oh my God, to be part of a project <laughs> where I dip in for three days and, and the, the meat of the film has been the hard work of all these other extraordinary actors. I mean, I'm just, you know, lucky <laughs> really I'm curious for you kid I mean obviously there are some parallels that people can draw between the character you play and and your own life both being in hugely successful TV shows when, when you're when you're reading a script like this 
do those parallels make you more excited or more trepidatious about approaching the material? Is like when you when there's more closeness to you in real life, is that exciting or challenging for you as as an actor? I think it's very much exciting. I I, um, I don't think I'll ever get to play again uh, a character that I can draw on so many on 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 something on on experiences so personal. Yeah, um, that's what I loved and love about this movie on a, on a personal level is that I you know I put a lot of, of myself into it and my own experience into it and I got hopefully got to speak to the audience in a way of, of from from a real truth because I, I, I that's my truth in, in many ways it's right. not in some ways in that I don't have to hide my sexuality um, I you know I, 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 I loved working on this film from start to finish and I loved working with Xavier um, who was just so generous to me and um, yeah I mean the, the film obviously deals with our notions of celebrity and how the, the public face that we often see is not necessarily what um, you know what is reality um, and fame is one of those bizarre things that nobody can prepare themselves for it seems um, I mean do you remember wrestling with fame in for each of you in terms of like how you were how you could negotiate that how you could reconcile still wrestling with it really I, I, I find it a very unnatural place for, for me I'm, I'm not uh, I don't find it a comfortable thing um, I, I, I hate the feeling when you're uh, when people s sort of have some kind of um, idea about who you are and preconceived how to see the idea. preconceived idea and, and I and and you have to build up all sorts of barriers and and and, and walls and blocks and you feel like you're never quite giving uh, an, enough to people or they want more from you and all of those things so what's the solution um, how do you well, bear one, with that yeah. one thing actually that I found which was really unexpected um, was I realized um, through an experience that I had where I went, I went to a, a, a retreat um, with a number of people, a kind of therapeutic experience. And I had a lot of, I just made people feel really bad about themselves. Because you meet a celebrity, someone who you assume, well, someone who is, you know, lauded and, 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 and adored or whatever, and you feel less than straight away. I've had that with people that I admire, you know, it's like, oh God, they won't, they won't want to talk to me. And to be in an environment where I was with a group of people who I didn't know, and each one of them felt less than when they were with me. And I didn't realize it, I just thought they didn't like me, or they were weird with me. And it wasn't until the end that they felt able to tell me that talking to me, they just felt shit about themselves. And they assumed that I would think they were shit because I was a celebrity. And it was like <laughs> me. That happens almost every day in my life that I'll meet someone. And so I feel like I have to do the extra work to make someone feel comfortable, to make someone feel at ease, yeah. to break through that because everyone's valuable. And the bit that makes me valuable, it's you know, it doesn't mean anything. Right. It's, but it's actually what I can do, what I find that I do, what I am for someone is just hold up a mirror to their greatest insecurities about themselves. And so within a very brief, time I find I can talk to someone whether it's someone in a you know airport or whatever and to get over that and for them to feel cool and be like actually this person thinks I'm all right they leave feeling great and that has been a real gift right actually just realizing that that you can make someone feel like that even though you have no idea you know uh, sorry that's a really long window no no it, no it's all phase. amazing it's a, very insightful um I, I, on a much sillier lighter note did you enjoy seeing little green day in this was that <laughs> on the bucket list for you i uh it was was it lighthouse was my favorite one life which never life 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 oh, i still mean, <laughs> mean hanging by a moment right jeep was it jeep what was the jupiter one that i don't think it ever made the film the i one? sang a lot of songs in this in <laughs> there's the the full album version of this apparently of you singing a dozen yeah. songs you're saying? Yeah, I'm not uh, available on. on <laughs> exactly. uh, not people will pay money for that. You might want to consider. Is going to be a soundtrack? <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> yeah. I am not what a natural singer. Are you self-conscious about your voice? Oh, self-conscious? I, I just know it's terrible. I've got a terrible voice. <laughs> no. So that's a yes. <laughs> I've got a terrible voice. I, you know, I, I could be approached by 
the best director in the whoever the best director in the world is, <laughs> you, <laughs> to do a musical, and I would turn it down in a second. So there are no karaoke nights on this. Save you didn't you didn't lead kid out on oh, to. I don't sing. <laughs> I, I you do. I've heard voice. you. <laughs> no, no, well. It's so touching though when someone just belts it out and it doesn't oh, matter how they sound. Exactly. They just want to be part yeah. of the song. I'm very touching. Exactly. You know? um, let's talk Harry Potter. I know this is important. I okay. love Harry Potter. I'm ready. Harry <laughs> <laughs> I know you would be. Uh, Michael, Ask me anything. Michael Gambon. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just tell me what that's like to direct Michael Gambon A, but Michael Gambon of Harry Potter B. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Well, I have his face tattooed on my forearm, so that's always a little weird. <laughs> I showed it to him and he was like, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> was he like really casual about it? Can I get out of this? It? Can I get out Was he casual? Hell. Uh, he was, I mean, he's, he's great. He's, he's funny. He's, he's... Um, a little bit about the tattoo. He was quite casual about it. Like, oh, yeah, right. No, no, no. He, 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 <laughs> I, I think he told me, well, I showed it to him in, in, in London and then again in, in Montreal. And then he said, yeah, I remember. <laughs> he already showed it to me. I mean, yeah, he was, he was cool with it. I mean, I guess it's weird. Um, I've got a giant one of Kit on my back. I'm going to show him later. And that doesn't uh, weird you out. Is that okay? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Kit, have you met people who've had tattoos I've got a of you? One of me on my back. Have you met people that have tattoos of you on, on them? I've seen pictures of people who've got tattoos of me. <laughs> it's a stra it's a strange experience. Yeah, yeah that's for life. Uh, what would Xavier Dolan uh, Harry Potter film look like? Is that a what's the what's the dream take on the Harry Potter mythos? What do you mean? Sorry. What do you? Well, I don't know. What's a story in the in the Potter universe you'd want to tackle? What's the and that I would want to direct? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> gladly, gladly discussing. Um, well, my dream, literally my dream, is to uh, because I can. I'm looking at the Fantastic Beasts uh, in, installments, and I'm realizing that they're not going there because of the timeline and because of, of, I think, well, I think, I might be wrong, but mm -hmm. I think they're gonna span uh, um, a number of years where, anyway, we won't get to that part of the story. But uh, I think, as, as one of the public also, what I would dream to see is, um, is the rise and, and fall of, of, of Voldemort, how he first uh, came about these, these uh, uh, the uh, Horcruxes, how he made them, how he found them, how he was rejected by Hogwarts, how he mm. then started to recruit and embarked on this journey of recruiting all of his, uh, uh, everyone is excited here. I, I, I love this view. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> Hyperventilating. We want to see this. We want, the yeah. thing about the Harry Potter movies is you love when the good guys win, but you need to have the darkness mm. because that's what dangerous and sexy is. The, remember this, this, oh God, this flashback <laughs> in, in um, Half Blood Prince when young Voldemort is asking Slughorn about, about, uh, about what a Horcrux is. And the first memory has been um, um, tempered with and it's like fake, it's a lie. And then when we see the real memory, his curiosity toward that darkness where he's like, I came about some rather odd okay, I'm not. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm no, this really is nerding. No, this is here. the best pitch okay. meeting ever. This is good. Well, he's he's like, um, uh, I came about. I I I, I came uh, about. I think this this rather odd form of ma rare form of magic. Mm. I believe it's called a Horcrux. And then the professor is like terrified, <laughs> and he sees the sheer evil in the eyes of of that young boy. And then he's like, this is all hypothetical, of course. And then he's like, of course, of course, it'll mm. remain our little secret. And now I'm gonna kill seven people <laughs> to make these horcruxes. And then it's just, I think all this, the people are really interested in, in, in seeing that darkness. And I think also that, I mean, nowadays, the world that we live in and the people in power and, and, and that have power and, and uh, what they reveal in the the in people and the people that support them, the ugliness, the right. we have to see the infancy of evil, not only mm, just evil yeah. being defeated. Of evil. We have to see the pr how it's We have to see how how we how do we make how do we, how do we make the haters? <laughs> yeah. How, how how do we give power to mm. fascists? Did you how see do we, Did you see Hanukkah's white ribbon? Yes, that's very good. Yeah, very very good. But that's little about the kid at the end who's like uh, oh, a little God. eye. That's the a little evil. liar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she but did to it. Do it with Harry Potter. That'd be so dope. And but would that be it's, for kids? It's approved. And it, it We'd would fit, and you'd finish. Would it be for kids though? The, it would be for kids, but no, no, no. Mm. maybe for teens. But yeah. and then the movie could finish. Yeah, you know, 
when Harry Potter was 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 born, was born or, yeah. or, or and and it's just <sighs> Okay, two quick things. You heard it here on MTV News. I'm so happy you asked me that question. It's the I'm best so question of all <laughs> the all the press that I've, that I've done during this this semester. Two quick things, uh, kid. I know I'm not even bothered to get Game of Thrones spoilers. Don't you worry. But I'm just uh, curious about like expectations going into this final season. I mean, do you feel like what you guys have shot can possibly live up to the imagination and the mind of the fans of this show? Is that? Cool? I hope so. Like, I, I think a, a TV series that spanned eight nine years is an incredibly difficult thing to end. I think not everyone's going to be happy, you know, uh, and you can't please everyone. My favorite TV shows are uh, Sopranos and uh, Breaking Bad and The Wire, and they all ended in a way that I, you know, that you can't, it's not, it's never going to satisfy you. Are you saying you're, this ends in a diner with you guys just sitting in a diner with music? Yeah, yeah, your journey. <laughs> <laughs> journey comes on. Spoiler. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Congratulations on the film and enjoy the rest of your Toronto, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.